Good evening. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't hear anybody bow in. Go ahead and do that for you. Attention. Salute. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, I'm Master Ken, creator of an 11th degree black belt in the most dangerous martial art in the world, the Meridote. I have studied in over three dozen martial arts facilities in the past 17 years, not one of them has been able to contain me. Now, I hope you understand that my presence up here first tonight means that I am now a two-time USA Hall of Fame award winner, which means which means the rest of you lost. <laughs> but I talked to Jim, and we do have about 250 honorable mention awards to give out tonight, just so you don't have to leave empty-handed. By the way, Jim, I noticed on my last uh, Hall of Fame award, it didn't have my name engraved, it just said member. And while I have gotten a lot of compliments on it in the past, I've, it's never won an award, so <laughs> thank you for that. Now, I hate to spoil the mood, because I know we're here to celebrate all of your achievements, but uh, I have some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the bad news first. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but... Everything that you've been studying up until now is complete bullshit. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Somebody name a martial art. Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu. Bullshit. <laughs> Karate. Bullshit. <laughs> Kenpo. Total bullshit. <laughs> Anybody notice with the, 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 those Kempo guys like to hit themselves a lot? Yes, yeah, Supposedly to generate power, which is great, because if you fight a Kempo black belt long enough, eventually he'll kick his own ass. <laughs> <laughs> Had somebody try to convince me Muay Thai was a real martial art. All I see in uh, pictures and the movies is them kicking trees with their shins and flower pots with their feet, so essentially that's full contact gardening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, MMA, it. what a bunch of crap. A bunch of naked guys rolling around on the ground, <laughs> and fighting. And last I checked, uh, you don't wear gloves in a street fight, right? You know who else wears gloves? Lunch ladies. <laughs> I'll bet they touch fewer wieners. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In this modern age, all of these old fighting systems have become completely irrelevant. They're all obsolete. For instance, it used to be if you wanted to learn the art of invasion, the art of disappearance, of hiding in the shadows, you used to have to travel around the world to find a ninjutsu master to study for years and years. Now all you have to do to disappear is buy a ticket on Malaysia Airlines. <laughs> They might be fine. We don't know. They might be okay. Years ago, I finally realized that every martial art is essentially bullshit. Because every martial art has a strength, but it also has a weakness. Except for mine. Which is why in Meridote, we take the best parts of every martial art in the world with none of the weaknesses. Why we like to say best of all, worst of none. Now, I know that you are all intimidated to be in the presence of the highest ranking martial artist in the world. What I want to tell you is, don't be nervous. Believe it or not, I started out as a white belt. The good news is it's not too late for any of you. In fact, this year we're continuing our black belt exchange program. If you bring me your old, tattered, worn out black belt and whatever bullshit system you've been studying, I will replace it with a crisp, clean Ameridote white belt. <laughs> Thanks to my YouTube show, Enter the Dojo, I've managed to help approximately billions of people across all eight continents, which is why Ameridote has been spreading throughout the world faster than a staph infection at a jiu-jitsu tournament. Oh! 
My roster of dedicated Maradote students is growing stronger by the day with almost 6 million YouTube views, 40,000 subscribers, and according to Facebook, there are at least 9,000 people following me right now, although I have yet to catch one. <laughs> I think they're all hiding behind Steven Seagal. <laughs> I have to admit, I don't know what it took Jim Thomas so long to invite me to this event. I can tell you're all very happy to have me here. Uh, after I got the call, I had to look inside myself. I, I wasn't sure why he waited so long. So I, I got the call, and then I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said, excuse me, Nick. I said, what was he waiting for? What was he so afraid of? Then the answer to that question hit me faster than Jean-Claude Van Damme going through an eight ball of cocaine. <laughs> and that answer hit me harder than Steven Seagal hitting an all-you-keep buffet. Oh. The answer is this. Once most people experience the power of a Maradote, they board up their dojos, turn away their students, burn their black belts, and dedicate their lives to studying under me. Much like herpes, once you've come into contact with a Maradote, it's with you for life. <laughs> Damn. But that's why, in the world of martial arts, a Maradote is making more waves than Steven Seagal sitting on a Russian prostitute's waterbed. <laughs> Well, what is the appeal of my perfect fighting system that I've created? And I'll tell you, Maradote is not an art. Maradote is a science. It is the science of street fighting. I like to think of my dojo as a laboratory of violence, which makes me a professor of pain, with a master's degree in mutilation and a doctorate in destruction. I also have an associate's degree in massage therapy. <laughs> I got it from the uh, Rutherford University of Baltimore Massage Education, or well, that's known as Rub Me. Rub Me. <laughs> Rub Me. If you're interested, you can get certified in one weekend of online courses. Just go to rubme.edu. <laughs> Don't go to rubme.com. Oh. That's a totally different website. <laughs> I made that mistake myself. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in studying Maragote, we have a couple of uh, promotions we're running this month. I want to tell you about them. Uh, one of the seminars is called Eye Gouges Galore. <laughs> because there's no eye in team, but there's two eyes in criminal. And one eye in pirate. <laughs> Speaking of pirate, did anyone see Sheehan Andro Stigliano's seminar today? I, yes. I don't know about your technique, sir, but I like the way you dress. <laughs> I actually, if anyone wants to learn how to defend against the techniques he taught today, I have an anti-pirate seminar where we spend, <laughs> we spend the entire day learning how to defend a hook punch. Hook punch, folks. Uh, oh, by the way, once you finish that seminar, we have another follow-up once you blinded your opponent. Uh, we have a, a seminar that's very popular with a school for the blind called Victory Without Vision. <laughs> that thing with the lights off. <laughs> we have some distinguished guests with us here tonight. Superfoot Bill Wallace is here. <laughs> Mr. Wallace is an undefeated kickboxing champion, accomplished author, and he is a great martial artist, travels around the world teaching people martial arts. Uh, he's been a good sport, picked on him a little bit in the past on some of these uh, events. Um, it's not unknown that he, he uh, during one of his fights, lost a testicle in, in uh, one of his fights. Uh, what I have failed to mention in the past, I want to make sure I mentioned tonight, was that just one year after suffering that injury, he re returned to fight and win the PKA Middleweight Championship, which is a great achievement, Mr. Wallace. Excellent. I have to say, getting back in the ring after sustaining such an injury took a lot of ball. <laughs> Paul Sir Busy is here. Oh, good. Paul Sir Busy. Us, how are you? Mr. Sir Busy is an attorney, and I understand that his wife is a divorce attorney. <laughs> Sounds like the perfect way to create a lasting marriage based on fear. <laughs> 
Mr. Circus. He owns five schools that he is very proud of and that his wife looks forward to owning someday. <laughs> Christopher Francis is here. Christopher Francis. Yes, right here. Yes, sir. From Trinidad. Welcome, right. sir. I saw some of your seminar today. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, unfortunately, there was no translator present, so I was not <laughs> anything that you said, uh, but if you, if you plan on releasing instructional videos in the future, I, I would recommend subtitles. Art Camacho is here tonight, the Hollywood star, Art Camacho. I understand he has an eye condition that makes him very sensitive to light, which is why he's wearing the sunglasses inside. Art Camacho is known for, for many movies. I was looking up his IMDb profile. He has brought us such great films as Funky Monkey <laughs> and The Ice Cream Man. Uh, he did all the action choreography on Half Past Dead, a uh, Steven Seagal movie. I went ahead and looked that up so that we could share in some of his accolades. It got uh, out of a possible 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, 2%. Oh. <laughs> There's probably a couple of reviews here that are positive, though. Uh, one, one reviewer said, Half Past Dead may be the year's funniest unintentional comedy. <laughs> For its inane plot, repetitive, unimaginative stunts, and dreadful dialogue. <laughs> there's, 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 probably a, there's probably a better one. Ah, here. I can't, uh, another reviewer said, I can't think of anything more cringe-inducing than Steven Seagal saying in a strained, would-be ghetto accent, We I. Oh, so congratulations on that. <laughs> Kevin McGrath is here. Yes, sir. Right up front. Welcome. Uh, I have to say I really liked uh, the matching slippers. If anyone uh, didn't see him today, he had a gray uniform and uh, donkey slippers looking up at him. He insists that it helps him kick ass. <laughs> Apparently his favorite saying is, play with it. Nice. He likes to teach people a technique and say, play with it. Well, I have to say it is unorthodox. If I was about to fight someone and they started playing with it, <laughs> I'd probably leave them alone. <laughs> so, good on you. <laughs> Ray McCollum is here tonight. Yeah, right. Ray, one of the top pork fighting champions of the 70s and 80s. Uh, I've been told he had a lot of groupies. I don't know if that's okay to say, but it's too late. <laughs> uh, but I heard they eventually lost interest in them when they found out that uh, having sex with a point fighter is much like fighting them. You touch them in three places in two minutes and then it's over. <laughs> And of course, right up front, Alan Woodman is here. Alan is a black belt in the art of Hojo Jitsu. I'm still unable to take that art seriously. <laughs> Sounds like a Japanese pole dancing class. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Hojo Jitsu is the art of using your belt to tie up and subdue your opponent. Originally, Alan was advertising on Craigslist. <laughs> but too many people showed up to his dojo in leather masks and ball bags. And <laughs> had to change that. Oh. Alan is here tonight with his daughter Lisa. <laughs> That's my mistake. Oh. That's my mistake. Just fiance Lisa. No. no. Oh, good. So it's here. Lisa ooh, is 19. Ooh. 19 years younger than Alan. Uh, that's okay. If you get a chance, ask ask them how he proposed. It's a very sweet story. You don't see a lot of marriage proposals at a Sweet 16 party. <laughs> it's good to see that despite the age difference, that love conquers all, particularly in ages with the uh, in states with the lowest age of consent. Uh, <laughs> I understand that Alan has actually been teaching Lisa some Hojo Jitsu. That's good that she's learning now how to work with a flexible weapon, because I understand that. 
Gina. I understand that as the years advance, the weapon becomes more flexible. <laughs> Now I wanted to uh, show you all a little bit of a uh, little bit of Ameridote really quickly, just uh, so you'll get a sense of why people are leaving other art forms in droves. Um, much like Anderson Silva's leg, this will be broken into two parts. <laughs> wow, that is. First part is going to be uh, illegal techniques. Now. <laughs> The reason a lot of sport guys don't like me is because almost every technique in Ameridote is illegal. In fact, there are more sports regulation violations in one minute of Ameridote training than there are in an entire pint of Lance Armstrong's blood. We. We. Technique I want to talk about tonight is fish hooking. <laughs> now, fish hooking, fish hooking, for those of you who don't know, is making a hook out of your finger here, inserting it generally into the mouth, and ripping, causing pain, blood, and certainly dispiriting your opponent. But when to use a fish hook? That's the question. What situations do you use this? Let's say Alan here is a pickpocket, okay? And he decides to grab my wallet. <laughs> Both hands on one hand. Good. First thing I'm going to do is reach back and secure it, okay? Make sure he doesn't get away. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn towards him so that I can use my fish hook. Now, the problem with this position is that I have to invert, okay? I have to invert the fish hook, which weakens the grip a little bit, okay? So instead, I'm going to do what's called a reach around. <laughs> Well, reach around, okay? Now, one fish hook is fine, but why not use two fish hooks just to make sure this guy doesn't do this again, okay? Now, the great thing about a technique like this is that it's not what I would refer to as orifice 